Hello and welcome back to our plumbing course. I'm Joe Carswell and this lesson is going to cover a very special plumbing material we call PEX, P-E-X. It's one of my favorites, so let's get right into it. Welcome to our channel. By now we've loaded almost 100 videos onto YouTube so that anyone can have access to structured trades training resources. We are really trying to grow this channel and the best way for that to happen is for you, the viewer, to subscribe. Also, if you learn something from these videos, don't forget to click like. So thanks for your support. Let's get back into the lesson. PEX, P-E-X, stands for cross-linked polyethylene pipe. P-E polyethylene, X for cross-linked. This is a sp very special plastic pipe that is flexible, it can stretch, and we can work with it. Very easy uh, plumbing system to work with. Uh, there's a lot of parts here that are specialized to it. We'll get into it. Let's start with our pipe though. This pipe comes in three colors. You have a red, a blue, and a white. And if you're running a hot water line, you can use a red so you can identify it, keep it uh, uh, under control and organized. You can use a blue line for a cold water supply. And if, if you need a neutral line or if it's not for hot or cold, you can use white and that does not specify one or the other. If you're going to CPEX, uh, some in some places, some people prefer the white color. It also comes in different sizes. You're looking at the two most common sizes right here. I've got three quarter inch and I have half inch. You will also see a one inch pipe. It also goes smaller. You can have a three eighths or a quarter inch line, but these two, three quarter and half inch are definitely your most popular. There are two types of PEX pipe. You have PEX A and PEX B, and PEX A will stretch more than PEX B. This means that if you freeze the pipes, they won't burst as easy. Also, we have a process we can use with PEX A where we stretch the end of the pipe and we can push the fitting in and the pipe will shrink around it and seal it up. That's called cold expansion. PEX B is a whole different system and that would be a crimping system. So we'll take the pipe and we'll put the fittings in and then we'll crimp a band or a ring around it to make it seal. PEX type B is less flexible than PEX type A and that's why we use it for our crimping process. With a lot of plumbing materials, they're going to share certain outside dimensions, inside dimensions, or specs. Our PEX outside diameter is going to share the same dimension as say other materials like copper. These two half inch pipes are exactly the same size on the outside. Another material that would share this same OD or outside diameter would be CPVC. It's another plastic pipe that we'll talk about later. Like other plumbing systems, we can use fittings to change directions with our pipes. We need to run them through a building. They need to carry a very complicated path and different fittings will get us there. To start with, let's talk about an end plug. If you're talking about a fitting that goes inside of a pipe, we're gonna call it a plug. If it goes on the outside, we call it a cap. And this plug will fit inside of this pipe and now this line can be capped off and the water will be sealed. It won't travel any further. A PEX coupler it will take two pipes and connect them in a straight line. I've got two couplers here. One is plastic and one is brass. They both do the same thing. And if we take a close look at this brass one, you'll see some raised ribs on this fitting. These are called barbs and the barbs are what will come in contact with the pipe. And when we crimp a band on it later, that's what's going to seal this fitting up. So we'll have two pipes that'll come in, one on this side, and then one on this other side. And then with our rings on here, we'll crimp it. And now we have a connection, a straight connection. That's a coupler. The same thing happens with our plastic coupler. And it fits in here inside of the pipe. And then the other one comes in like this. And if you notice, there's these funny legs on this fitting. Those are for our rings to space them off of the end a specific distance. It's really critical that these uh, are spaced in a specific place to meet those barbs on the inside when it gets crimped down. So let's take a closer look at these crimp rings. So these are copper rings and they are blackened so that you can 
understand that there are four pecs. And I'll show you one that's not black and we'll get into a little backstory on this whole process. This is a half inch crimp ring. I also have a three quarter crimp ring. So this fits over a three quarter pipe. I also have what's called a pro crimp ring. It has a plastic, red plastic stop on it. This will work similar to our stops on our plastic fittings, but it does a good job with brass. So this fitting fits inside of this pipe fairly tight, but not tight enough. If we were to pressurize this pipe with water, it would leak like a sieve. If we add a crimp ring to this, and then we take our uh, tool, which is a crimping tool, we can clamp down on this and it'll become a little smaller. It's going to create pressure on this pipe and clamp it very tightly onto this fitting. That's what gives us that watertight seal. It's a very easy tool to use. We're not adding heat. We're not doing anything uh, really strange or crazy. It's a quick and inexpensive operation that happens with hand tools. So if you notice with these pro crimp rings, we've got this red plastic part. It's working as a spacer. And what it's doing is it's positioning this ring, which will get clamped down on our barbs in exactly the right place. It's uh, spacing it about an eighth of an inch off of the end of the pipe. This is really critical. We don't want this ring too far this way or we don't get a good clamp. And if it's too far towards the end of the pipe, it doesn't seal as well either. And this is a similar situation, but it works in a different way with our plastic parts. Now we're using these pieces as stops. So when we push this ring on and get ready to crimp it, it is spaced properly by this piece of plastic off of the end of the pipe, say about an eighth of an inch. And that's the best place for that to be to get a good, reliable, continuous seal. Another style of band that we can crimp pecs with is called a pinch crimp band. This one requires a different tool than our other one, but it will do the same thing. It will uh, be compressed and it will tighten up around that fitting. We can use this spacer the same way and we get that watertight seal. When we're running pipe, we need 90 degree angles. We would use an elbow to make a right angle turn in PEX pipe. I have here a plastic and a brass one, just like our couplers. And these two guys work exactly the same way. We'll have our pipe that comes in on one side here. We will crimp that with a band, just like our other one. And we can bring in another pipe here. And that's our 90 degree turn with our PEX. The cool thing about PEX is if you need to make a 90 degree turn, you don't always need a fitting. And when we're talking about plumbing, the less fittings we have, the less chance we have of leaks. So another way that we can make a 90 degree turn with a PEX pipe is just bending it. So as you see here, this pipe is flexible. It will take this bend and we have special tools we can use. This is a bend support. This is a plastic one. They also come in metal and we can put our pipe in here and it will hold a 90 degree bend on this pipe. We also have a place where we can put a fastener in. So we're not only creating and keeping this 90 degree bend on this PEX pipe, we're also providing a place we can attach it somewhere and securing our pipe is just as important as the rest of the plumbing process. Sometimes when we're plumbing, we have one line and we need to run another one off of it. We would use a T to do that. I've got two PEX T's here. One is plastic, one is brass, and these work like the other ones. We just have three connections now. So we can take a pipe, run it off this guy, one off this side, and then another one off of this side. And now we have a branch connection. Say we have a main line, we have one coming off of it, or you might have this as your feed and you have two lines coming off. So this offers us options. Often when we're plumbing, we need to make transitions from pipe sizes, pipe styles, pipe connections. We would do this with what is often called an adapter. And an adapter will take our pecs, which we're working with, and it allows us to transition to another pipe. So one transition to show you would be a PEX to a threaded connection. So as you see here, we have our PEX barb on this end, half inch PEX barb. And on this end, I have threads. These are half inch NPT threads. 
and that's a standard thread that we can use a lot in plumbing. We can attach our pecs here, and now we can screw these threads into a number of different materials, valves, fittings, other things that are going on. This type of fitting offers us a lot of options when we're plumbing. So this is a male version of a PEX to a threaded adapter. We also have a female version, which has those same threads on the inside. It has our PEX barb on this side, and now we can install this one. And now we need a male thread that we can connect to this, and we can make a watertight seal that way. Another style of adapter for a different material would be a PEX to a sweat connection. This is a brass fitting that has our PEX barb on this side, and on this side it fits a copper pipe. We would sweat this onto our copper pipe and then fit it onto our PEX. So it would turn out looking something like that. So here's another version of an adapter. This is called a drop ear elbow. If you notice, it has a PEX on this side and it turns a 90 degree and it has threads on the inside here, female threads. You will find these uh, very commonly in a shower. This would be where your shower head would come out of the wall. If you ever wondered what that went into, it's probably one of these. So our PEX pipe goes in on this side and then we would thread that shower head arm into this adapter right here. So we've talked about fittings that help us change direction. We've talked about fittings that uh, cap ends. We've talked about fittings that change connection styles. There's another type of adapter that you might use. That would be a reducer. And I have one of those here that will transition from three quarter pecs on this side to half inch pecs on this side. So now we're changing size in a sort of a coupler configuration. So my half inch would go on this side and I could put a three quarter inch pecs on this side. Mm. And now we have a size reduction from this pipe to this pipe in a simple fitting. You might see a reduction in size in another type of fitting. I have a T fitting over here. And this one has a three quarter on this side, a three quarter pex on this side, and then a half inch pex on this side. This allows us to reduce the, the branch connection here from our three quarter to a smaller half inch. So we've been through our pipes and our fittings. Now we have to talk about valves. Valves, when we're talking about supply lines, are really important. It helps us to control the flow of the water, whether that's shutting it off for servicing or controlling the literal flow of the water. We can restrict that water any way we need to with a valve. And we can put a PEX valve into the system. This is a ball valve with PEX connections on either side. It's a quarter turn valve. So what you see here is a handle that will turn this direction for off. You even have a, uh, it's labeled with the direction. And if you turn it uh, if parallel to the fitting or to the valve, then that would be full on. So anywhere in between would be less and less and perpendicular becomes completely a shut off situation. And don't forget when we have our pipe on here, pipe would go on either end like this. We would have a ring that we would slide on here and we would crimp that down. We would do the same on this other end. And now we have a watertight continuous connection with a control valve in line for any pipe that we need. So let's see if we can get a close up of how a ball valve works. Right now you're looking at it in the camera. It should be open. You have a pass through. There is a ball in there that has a hole drilled in it. With the handle in this direction, that uh, hole that's drilled in is in line with the pipe. As I turn this valve, it's going to close and that hole gets changed direction. That hole's this way now, so we have no flow through this pipe. So here's another valve style. This is a gate valve. And a gate valve works with a door in it. It has a little door that drops and raises based on this knob being turned. So as I turn this handle or knob, that gate will open up, it'll lift up, or it will go down. It requires several turns of the handle 
And when you get it all the way down, it should shut the water off completely. You will find these valves in line in a lot of plumbing, but look at the connections here. We've got a threaded connection. So how do we connect our PEX pipe to this specific valve? We can use some of those adapters that we talked about before. We've got our threaded connection here and we have our PEX on this end. We can thread this in. This happens to be a half inch adapter. This would require a three quarter version, but of course in plumbing, we have all different sizes available. So one size up from this half inch would fit in on this end. We'd have our PEX connection here, and then we do the same on the other side and we can put any type of valve in that system that we want. Another valve you might see with PEX is an angle stop. And an angle stop is a special kind of valve that will be very close to any fixture, whether that's a sink or a toilet, anything like that. The PEX will come in on this side. And then there's a right angle turn, we call it an angle stop. And then it'll come out in a smaller pipe here that will go to that fixture. It also has a valve here or a knob at the top that will turn on and off a valve. If we need to work on that fixture, this is a great way to do it. We can shut the water off here and then service that fixture and turn it back on without having to turn off the entire building supply. So that's how the PEX system works. I have one other type of connection to show you, and that is what's called a push to connect fitting. As you see here, this is an elbow, a 90 degree elbow. And we talked about the outside diameter of pipes. This fitting will work on several different pipe materials. It will work on our copper pipe, It'll work on our CPVC pipe, another plastic, and it will also work on our PEX. This is the simplest plumbing you can do. All you do to make a watertight connection with a push to connect fitting is you push the, the pipe into the fitting tightly. And when it bottoms out, that's it. You're done. This is a watertight seal here. If I wanted to, I could run a copper pipe out of the other side because the outside diameters are the same. So now I have a uh, push to connect fitting that's working as a transition from PEX to copper. We also have the ability with a push to connect fitting to reuse them and remove them. This is very unusual for, for plumbing. Most plumbing fittings, it's a one shot deal. Once they're on, they're done. We need a special little tool here. This is a removal tool. We can slide this on the pipe. And if we apply pressure here, on this fitting, the pipe will then slide right out. I can reuse this fitting a, a number of different times, and that is unheard of for plumbing. So these are very modern too. They work with, as I mentioned, several different materials, and they come in a lot of different configurations. I even have a valve here that works on PEX. This has a push to connect uh, end on it. It's, this is a, what's called a straight stop. Instead of our angled stop, this runs in a straight line and we can just push this right on our pipe and, and that's it, you're done. So as you can see from all the stuff we've looked at today, why PEX is such a great system. We can bend this stuff, we can add fittings, there are valves we can use, we can put it together with hand tools and it just offers us a lot of options. Keep in mind, we've only looked at some of the basics today. There's a lot more to go with all of this, a lot more parts, features, and process. So thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next lesson. This video is a production of Trade Skills U, all rights reserved.